morning, good afternoon, good evening, you lovely people, whichever one it is for you. Welcome back to Livy White Lane. I hope that you're all having a ruddy good day and week, wherever you are in the world, and whatever you are planning to get up to. And you're all very welcome along to your match preview for Tottenham Hotspur's game this Thursday night in the Europa League against AZ Alkmaar at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We all really know that it's still White Hart Lane. And look, I'm looking forward to it. Two wins from two so far in the Europa League. We've made a cracking start in this competition. And I'm looking forward to the next game. Alkmaar at home. Yes, they've got some good players. Yes, they're not a terrible side, as I say. And yes, the Eredivisie isn't a bad league. But on paper, it's a game that we should be winning all day long. No doubt about it. It should be three points. Lovely jubbly. Bob's your uncle. Move on to the next. And I think it's the three points that we need. Because we won our first two games in the Europa League, as I say. And those two wins were in that run of five games that we won. Then we had the Brighton capitulation. We smashed West Ham. So we're starting to build that confidence back. A win on Thursday, as I say, especially if we rest a few players, we'll continue to build that confidence back heading into that Crystal Palace game. And then if we win that, we head into the Villa and City games, as I say, really up for them. Like we would have been after those five wins in a row. And I also think it's massive because look at the fixtures that we have after this one in the Europa League, you know, nine points on the board, it gives you a very, very good chance of going through, and I think we need them, I think we need them, because don't get me wrong, I think we will get some points in these games, but our next three games aren't going to be easy whatsoever, first up, Galatasaray away, Victor Rossi men leading the line, their fans whistling every time our team's on the ball, it's going to be hostile, and it's going to be a real test of character, we're going to really see the mentality that these boys have, will they crumble under the pressure as I say, will they stand up like men and play off football and get a huge victory there, because it's one of those stadiums, if you go there, no matter the team they have at that time, and you win, and you play your football, it says a lot about the mentality and the character in your side, because they make it bloody difficult and hostile in Istanbul. I mean, fair play to any fans going to that game. You're quite literally putting your lives on the uh, on the line. But dedication and all that, hey, I wouldn't go anywhere near Istanbul. Sod that for a game of toy soldiers. But look, Galatasaray we've got coming up after that. Roma, talking of hostile fan bases, we've got two of the host, uh, most hostile grounds. Well, actually, we're not going to Roma. They're coming to us, but their fans are hostile. We've got two of the most hostile fan bases, as I say, going against ours in the next two games. So, look, that's going to be a tough game, as I say. Obviously, they sacked their manager, De Rossi, at the beginning of this season, but they've still got some fantastic players, the likes of Paolo Dybala, for example. And they are a top European side, Roma, with a lot of European history, as I say. Well, the Conference League a few years ago under Jose, they were doing very, very well under him. They're going to make it difficult for us. And following that game, we've got Rangers. Have Rangers been fantastic so far in the Scottish Premiership? No, they lost 3-0 a couple of weeks ago to Celtic. But whenever you go to Ibrox in Europe, do they make it difficult? Yes, Europa League finalists a few years ago, as I say. You know, I'm one of these people who, you know, will very easily slag off the Scottish League, especially when people talk about Ange Postecoglou's achievements in the Scottish League, because the difference in quality is huge. But what Rangers did a few seasons ago was unreal, getting to that final, beating sides such as Leipzig on the way. They were very, very unlucky against Frankfurt as well, went down to penalties. So, Ibrox away, that's going to be a very, very tough game. So look, the three next games to say, whilst all three sides don't have top quality players, like some of these sides in the Champions League, your Barcelona's, your PSG's, the two away games are at very hostile grounds that will make it very, dif uh, very, very difficult for us. We know how much Scottish um, Scottish fans like taking on English sides and wanting to get one over us. So they'll be very, very hostile, as I say. Galatasaray, I wouldn't dare go there myself. And Roma, although they're coming to our stage and they've got some good players, their fans will be going mad in that corner. So look, we need to be picking up the three points in this game heading into those. We need that confidence, as I say, to keep building after the win against West Ham. And I think we've got a good chance. Alkmaar made a phenomenal start to the season. They really did. But last five games, things haven't really, really been working out. They've got one win in their last five, four losses in a row right now for Alkmaar. Look, their loss uh, on the weekend just gone wasn't terrible. They took on PSV, as I say. PSV at top of the um, you know, division at the moment. And they gave them a good game, down to 10 men. Got a goal right towards the end. Made it, uh, you know, difficult for them, tight and cagey. So... They're not a terrible side, Alkmaar, but they're on a bad run of form. We've just picked up a 4-1 win. 
we're at home, we should be winning this game. There are no excuses to get a draw or anything other than three points. And it should be quite a comfortable three points. It should be. But look, as I say, who is their danger man? I've written it down here to remind myself. Troy Parrott. Strange one, isn't it? Troy Parrott, a guy who we never thought would make it at Tottenham. He's gone to Alkmaar. He's been banging in the goals so far this season. He really, really has. Their fans are absolutely loving him over there. Obviously, over the next four, uh, over the last four games, he hasn't been brilliant. But none of their team has, to be fair. He's had a really, really good start in um in Holland. And look, I never thought he would make it in the Premier League. Don't get me wrong. He's a fairly good striker. He'll be able to play at a decent level. For example, I think he'll do all right if he, you know, comes back to a championship side, maybe, you know, a lower league side in Serie A or something. But I don't think he'll be able to make it in the top leagues, no matter what club he's playing for, especially a top club in, you know, La Liga, the Premier League, even the French League. I think you could make it in a lower club in the French League. But the top clubs in the top leagues and in a couple of leagues, Premier League and La Liga, I don't see him making it at any team. So look, I think he's found his level there and fair play to him. He's smashing it. He's doing really, really well. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's eager to score a goal. Obviously, after us selling him, there was a lot of talk a few years ago about him and Dane Scarlett being the next big academy project. Dane Scarlett, there's still a little bit of potential. I'm not that optimistic with that guy. I don't think he's as good as some people think. He's, I think Mikey Moore's the real academy prospect that we should be hyping up. But as I say, Troy Parrott had a lot of hype. Never really worked out, gone to Alkmaar, smashing it. He'll be coming back to Spurs, although, you know, there's no um no hatred between the club and the player. He'll be wanting, you know, to prove a point. He'll be wanting to say, you know, you shouldn't have released me and score a goal and put in a special performance. So I think we've got to be um be wary of Troy Parrott because he'll be up for it. He'll be wanting to prove a point. He's their danger man, as I say, back at Tottenham. I think he'll get a good reception, but yeah, he's their danger man. He is their danger man, as I say. Fifth in Eredivisie, coming off four losses though, a poor run of form. We're coming off a win at home, Europa League, we should be winning. We should be winning. But what lineup will Ange Postacoglu go with? This is the lineup that I predict he will go with, right? I think Ange will go with Fraser Forster in goal. I think he will go with Archie Gray at left back. I think he will go with Romero and Dragazin as our centre back partnership. The midfield is. Uh, it's, it's so unpredictable, our midfield at the minute, because to be fair, we've got some really good options. Saar, Bissouma, Ben Tanker, Madison, Kudasevsky, our best midfielder, you know, Bergval, Archie Gray, who can play in there. And all options, I think, would be fairly solid in the Europa League for a game like this. So it's hard to predict the midfield three we're going to go with. But I'm going to say that he goes with Papi Matasar after his second half. I'd like Saar to start against Palace alongside Bissoum with Kulu in the 10 because that's what we did against West Ham in the second half that worked out so well. But I don't think Hand will do that. I think against Crystal Palace, um, he'll likely go with James Madison, um, Kulusevski and either Bissouma or Ben Tanker. So I think in this game, he'll go with Pape Matasar. I'm saying he'll go with Bissoum, but it all depends on what he wants to go with on Sunday as well. I think if he starts Bissoum in this game, Ben Tanker is probably starting on Sunday. If he starts Saar in this game, you know, maybe Bissoum starts on Sunday in Madison. I think the midfield three that plays this game will give us a good idea on the midfield three that will start against Crystal Palace and at Celeste on Sunday. But the midfield three, I predict, as I say, I've gone with Saar, I've gone with Bissouma, and I've gone with Bergval. That's the midfield three. I think he will go with it. It'll be interesting to see if he plays, you know, someone such as a James Madison. Up top, I think Ange Postacoglu will go with Brennan Johnson on the right wing. Brennan Johnson's been consistently playing for us this season, banging in goals. Didn't score for the first time in God knows how long on the weekend. So it's a good chance to get a goal against Alkmaar at home. I think he'll play Timo Werner on the wing. Get to that a little bit more in a second when I talk about who should be starting. And I think you'll play Richarlison up top. Now, I'm not Richarlison's biggest fan. Obviously, the £60 million price tag isn't his fault. That's on the club, and I blame the club for that. But I do think it was a bit of a waste of money. He's very injury-prone, inconsistent. He had that good run of form last season, but so did Bissouma at the, uh, at the beginning of last season. And I criticise him like mad. So how can I criticise one player for having one good run of form at Spurs and not doing anything else and not do it to another? In my opinion, Richarlison hasn't been consistent enough for the top level. But in the Europa League for games like this, I think he should start. These are games where he can build his confidence up, build his fitness back up. As I say, Solanke has pretty much started every game since he came back from injury after that Newcastle game. So, yeah, I think go with Richarlison. Werner is what Andrew will go with on the wing. I think he'll go with Richarlison and I think Johnson. 
on the right. What I would like to see, though, personally, I mean, I don't know why we didn't bring Spence into the Europa League squad. It looks even more thick now that he signed a new contract as well. It really, really does. But what I would personally like to see in this game is Archie Gray at left back. I think he's more of a six, but he hasn't been playing there at all for Spurs, and I prefer him to Ben Davies. Although I don't think Ben Davies is as bad as some people make out he is. He's a fairly solid player. But nevertheless, that's a conversation for another day. Archie Gray at left back, I would personally go with Radu Dragasin and Christian Romero, the same centre-back partnership that, um, that Ange will probably go with. I would personally then go with Pedro Porro at right back. Um, I didn't write that down in the lineup. I just realised I just completely skipped the right back. Yeah, we're going to start with 10 men. We don't need 11 to beat Alkmaar. That's the Spurs mentality. But no, look, I think Pedro Porro is what Ange will start with, and he's who I would start with because I'm not being funny, but who else? Who else have we got to play right back, you know? Jed Spence, not even in the Europa League squad. So, look, I think we'll start with um with Poro, and I'd like to see Poro. Personally, on Sunday for the Premier League game against Palace, I would like to see the same midfield that we saw in the second half against West Ham because it clicked so well and away from home countering them. I think that would really work out with Saar, as I say, sitting behind Bissouma in the 8, allowing him to play at his best, and Kulu in the 10, who is just genuinely one of the best midfielders in the world right now check out my video on that the other day that that's not a controversial opinion is it but look because that's the midfield three I would go with on Sunday I would play different players in this game personally I would play James Madison as your attacking midfielder I would play Lucas Berg found as I say in the eight and I would play Ben Tanker sort of as more of a six but also playing as an eight as well we know how Ange likes to play with two eights that would be the midfield three I would go with but any midfield three you go with looks fairly strong right now our midfield was quite inconsistent at the beginning of the season like a box of chocolates you don't uh, you don't know what you're going to get every player over the last few weeks as I say before the international break and just coming off it has been playing fairly well so there's good competition for places there you know so any midfield three that Ange goes with in this game and on Sunday, I'm not going to be raging about, you know. So, that'd be the midfield three I'd go with. Up top, left wing, it's got to be Mikey Moore. He won't go with Mikey Moore, though. He went with Mikey Moore against Ferenc Fadosh at home against Alkmaar. He'll probably go with Werner. And look, I've always said the same thing about Werner. He's an attacking player whose worst attribute is to score goals. He hasn't scored one so far this season. He's a terrible footballer. He can't hit a barn door to save his life. Does he make good runs? Yes. Yes, he does. Does he, you know, get into good space and, you know, allow the team to play better at times? Yes. But as a strike, well, not even as a striker, he was a striker, but as more of a winger now to, you know, have your worst attribute be finishing and putting the ball in the back of the onion bag. When you're playing for a top club like us competing in Europe, it's not good enough. Mikey Moore, there's been so much hype around, uh, around him when we have seen cameos from him this season against Fenerbahce Valos. Little sort of five to ten minute cameos in the Premier League. He's looked really good. Give him that game time. Let's see what he's really about. Start him in this game, you know. Oh, we don't want to risk him as a young player. It's not like we're playing Galatasaray. And we'll see what he's really about. Because if he's not going to be stepping up against, you know, sides like Ace at Alkmaar now. Or Fenerbahce Fanos. I'm not being funny. Is he ever going to make it? Give him that real chance against these sides to massively make a name for himself on the European stage. He should be starting for me. Richarlison, I don't have a problem with Richie starting up top. I'd probably go with that. Solanke, given that one game rest, heading into Palace. Don't want him injured again or burning out because he's been brilliant for us. You know, he's only scored two goals and hopefully he will score more. I'll judge him, you know, on his goals at the end of the season. But his overall play for us has been brilliant. I know I just contradicted myself with saying Timo Werner's overall play, but Solanke has scored goals, to be fair. Timo Werner hasn't. Two in the Prem, three overall. So, considering he had that injury, it's not bad. It's not a bad record whatsoever, considering everything else he does. Timo Werner does everything else. He doesn't score any goals. So, look, I would go with Richarlison, as I say, up top. I think he does deserve the, um, the start coming back from injury. And Johnson on the right, again... I don't want to play Kulisevsky there, you know. It makes me think, why did we spend two years playing him on the right wing when Juventus started him out on the right wing and then he started playing as a 10 and an 8 for them and that was where he was at his best. Why have we not been playing him as a 10 or an 8 for years? I, I can't get my head around it. But look, as I say, um, Brennan Johnson on the right. I don't see who else. Wilson Odebert's still injured, you know. Haven't really got many other options. When Odebert comes back from injury, you can play him in the Europa League game. But I'd say, I'd say start Johnson. But look... 
That would be my lineup. You've heard what I think Angie's lineup will be. Score prediction, it's at home. I'm going to be very confident with this. No matter the team we go with, I think we've got enough quality, even if we rotate, to hammer out Mark. I think we're going to win this game 4-1. We always concede a goal, and I expect that we will in this one. But we're at home Thursday night under the lights. You know, they're on a terrible run of form. I like Troy Parrott, but their best player is Troy Parrott. An academy failure for, uh, for us. Let's hammer the man. Let's batter him like a Haddock Daniel local fish and chippy. So, I'm going 4-1 to Spurs. I think we'll win this game quite comfortably. Comment down below your thoughts and opinions. Your score prediction, as I say, for this game. Your predicted lineup, the lineup you would go with. Your thoughts on our next games coming up. All of that fantastic stuff down below. I'm going to make like a banana and split. Have a good one. And as always, come on you Spurs.